Hello everyone. So in the previous video, we did talk about a condition of shortening the Salah in verse number 101 of chapter 4 in the Quran. And it's in that it says that if you, if you are scared uh, that those who don't believe in the true faith might cause you trouble or might harm you, it is okay for you to decrease or shorten from your Salah. So if you have not watched this video, uh, the previous video, I mean, please take a moment and watch it. That is really going to help you understand this one. So uh, we are going to, in this video, we are going to talk about uh, verse number 102 of chapter 4. So verse number 102 of chapter 4 is directly related to the previous verse. This is basically the example. Why? Because in this verse, the believers are in that situation. They are actually in the war. They are scared. They are worried that they might be attacked by the enemy. Remember, we are talking about the wars in 1400 years ago with horses, camel, donkeys, and people walking and running with swords. We are not talking about airplanes and radar systems and all those things. So we are just make sure you know that we are talking about the context of the time when the Quran was revealed to the prophet and to the believers. So this is an example for uh, verse number 101. So Basically, and in, in, in previous video, we did it, we, we, I, I went through a mathematical uh, proof that proves to you that Salah is a uh, two rack or two unit act of turning towards Allah. So a Salah is normally two rack or two units. And when it's shortened, it's shortened to one unit and I we went through several verses in several videos so there's nothing more that I can add uh, about the number of units in the Salah so that's what it is and in this one in this verse we are going to go through the example Allah gives us an example it's an example of a one unit Salah and how one unit has to be performed but keep in mind, if you know how one unit of Salah is, then you should have absolutely no problem to do a two-unit Salah. Because Salah is a masna. Masna means a doubly, something that has two units. So each unit is the same. So without further ado, let's you can look at the components of each unit of Salah. We are going to look at the components of each unit of Salah. Um, let's take a look at that. So it says, when you were with them in a war, in a campaign. So again, we're talking about 1400 years ago. And then it says, فَأَقَمْتَ لَهُمُ الصَّلَاةِ It means basically, and when you established, or when you stand, when you establish, or when you stand the Salah for them. So the prophet, or the leader of the community, or the leader of the army, whoever is leading the Salah, is there and establishing the Salah and standing the Salah for them. Then, so what are the steps? Then right after that, it gives us the step. Step number one. What is the step number one? This is the step number one. Faltaqum. Faltaqum in Arabic means must stand. Who must stand? Ta'ifatun minhum. It means a group of them. Ma'ak. It means with you. So I am dissecting and analyzing this verse because this verse is extremely important. So فَالْتَقُمْ So basically what it means that a group of them must stand with you. This is really important. You, this is فَالْتَقُمْ So there is no other way to translate this word. This word does not mean establish. It, you cannot say then a group of them must, must establish with you. No, this is this means standing. Faltaqum, you can use it up. Dictionary, go all over the Quran. Other verses, faltaqum, it means here it means a stand. So a group of them must stand with you. So that's the first step in the salah. 
Salah is not Quran session. Quran session, you can put it on your side. You can be lying upside down. You can be on your hands, whatever position. You can have Quran session. You can be sitting. But this is, you have to stand. For Salah, you have to very respectfully stand. That's the first step. So Salah is a physical act of turning towards Allah. And the first action that you do, of course, after ablution. But the first action that you do after ablution is that you stand. فالتقوم. So keep in mind, I am just uh, emphasizing this. Stand. So it's a physical standing. It's not a spiritual standing. It's a physical standing. So a group of them should stand with you. And imagine we, there might be two groups. It might be three groups. It might be ten groups, depending on the size of the army. We don't how big that army is. So the first group. We're talking about the first group. So the first group has to stand with you. And they must hold. They must hold their weapons. So they are standing. They are holding their weapons also. Let's go to the <clears throat> next verse. Next verse is فَإِذَا سَجَدُ So we went from standing to sajadu. What does sajadu mean? Sajadu means, basically this verse means that when or after they have prostrated. So after they prostrated. So we went from standing to prostration. So remember, once again, it's not Quran session. In the Quran session, you don't need to be standing. So, and I... I have shared several videos about prostrations. I have gone through all the verses that talk about the prostration in the Quran. I've talked about, looked at all the verses that talk about ruku and all those. So you can see, I'm not going to go through this. So this says, فَإِذَا سَجَدُ When, after they have prostrated, فَلْيَكُونُ مِنْ وَرَائِكُمْ We are talking, we are still talking about the first group. So after the first group prostrated, Again, the same first group, Then they, the first group that we have been talking about, I'm going to write it down here, should be around you. So from the position of prostration, so prostration is as soon as they prostrated, Salah is over. They are not sitting to do tashahud. They are not sitting to do send salam to each other, move their heads right and left in a funny way, to give salam to each other. Then the salah is over. As soon as the prostration is done, fa'eza sajadu, salah is over. What is the next step? The next step is here. The next step is that this group, now they have to run, or perhaps walk, or they have to crawl, depending on the war situation and our requirements. Very quickly, the first group should Get into the position around the, the area where people are saying, the, performing the salah. And then, And another group that has not done salah should come. So the first group, imagine, performs the salah. As soon as they prostrate, salah is over. There is no sitting. There is no tashahud. Uh, there is no salam or anything. As soon as prostration over, salah is over. They jump into the position around as guards, and the next group comes in in the middle to say the salah. And then they have to do salah with you. Let's look at the graphic together. I did a uh, quick drawing. I think that would really help you understand. So this is, imagine that this is just a person uh, leading the Salah, establishing the Salah for the group. So this is, who is this? This is our first group. This is our first group and they are being guarded by another group around them. Imagine there are several groups. So this is our first group. So I'm going to write first. And just for the sake of example, this let's say this is our second group. Our second uh, group as is here. So this group does the Salah. They perform the Salah. Remember Salah is how many rak'ah here? Is one rak'ah or one unit? Either one is the same. Either one is the same. But uh, uh, so so they are standing here. They are performing the salah. As soon as they prostrate, salah is over. So what should this group do? As soon as Then this group comes over there, and this group comes here. 
So this group comes in and they do the Salah. Or alternatively, let's say for the sake of example, let's say they are, they are, uh, our third group is this group. For the sake of example, let's say our third group is this group. What happens? And let's, at this point, this group, this, this is the second group that has come here. They just exchange with this group. So these two groups exchange. So this group goes over their stands around them. And that group comes and performs the Salah, another one racket. Is that clear? So um, I just want you to see that. I'm going to go over one more thing with you before we, um, we try to go to the next verse. So this is the entire verse. I'm going to go through it so that just, just to make sure we are, I, I just want to make sure you all understand this because my brothers, my sisters, that really makes me sad when the Quran has full description of the Salah. And then some of you who I see, I just from your comments, I see that you're true believers, but you're still doing it wrong, even though Quran has it. And even though a servant of the Lord, like myself, I'm nobody, just like yourself, I am pointing that out to you. And you still insist that after doing this uh, prostration, you have to sit or you perform two prostrations, things like that. Please don't do that. That is shirk. Do, do yourself a favor. Do yourself a favor. That is shirk. My brothers, my sisters, that is shirk. Allah has specified the Salah. Just perform the Salah like Allah has commanded, commanded you in the Quran. Don't add anything to it and don't decrease anything to it. Don't take anything off. Don't add anything. Just stick to the Quran. Just stick to the Quran. So, uh, when you were with them, establish the Salah for them, as I mentioned, stand a group of them with you. So, Let's say this is a so faltaqum stand. So this is the first step of the salah. Faltaqum. I'm going to do an arrow. So let's say there's only one person. Let's say that's me. I'm standing. I'm standing uh, 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 behind the person, the prophet, or the person who is establishing the salah. So, and then I take my uh, so let's forget about that. Fa'iza sajadu. So when they prostrate, where is this? This is right here. So there's a step two is right here. Step three is right here. So Allah is bypassing a step two. So Allah is specifying for us the beginning of the Salah and the end. So what is the beginning? Step number one is the beginning. And step number three is the end. So start is a step number one. End is a step number three. So what is Allah missing here? Allah is missing the second step. Allah did not mention anything about that. But let's finish this. So as soon as this is over, as soon as the sajadu, This is really important. This is one together. You have to remember, this is one together. I want to emphasize that. Faiza sajadu, when the first group who is standing, as soon as they do the prostration, they have to jump and go around as guards. So the Salah is over. They have to jump and go. It means they have to walk fast or they have to run, whatever, depending on the war situation. that go, As soon as they perform the Salah, they jump and go and stand guard. And then what happens? And then the other group that has not performed the Salah has to come. So, the question some of you might have for me is like, oh, Allah did not mention the ruku. So Allah did not mention the bowing. So this is not, a, so this is not what it means. My brother, my sister, Allah does not need to mention the ruku here. Why would he mention the ruku? For you to get from a step number one to a step number three, for, for a, a normal person, for a sane person, to get from standing to prostration, you have to perform the ruku. How else can you get to that position? The only other way for you to get that position is to throw yourself down face down. That's the only other way is that you throw yourself down face down and you're going to break your nose and your head. And after two, three times of doing that, you're either going to you're going to have concussions, you're going to have severe physical and mental damage. So you cannot do that. You cannot throw yourself down face, uh, face down. So the only way 
to go from step number one to step number three is that you have to do ruku. And now ruku, you can do it two ways. You can either kneel first and then bow, or you can bow and then kneel. Either one of them, you're going to end up in this position. Right? So there is no need for Allah to say that. Let me tell you something. I tell you one. Let me just clean this. Let me do it one more time. So let me tell you. Just let me show you this. I tell you one plus, and then I do this, and I say two. So what, what is here? Are you going to say that this is, oh, I don't know. You didn't mention this. So we don't understand. We, do, we cannot, that is not true. We don't understand because we didn't mention this. Of course I didn't mention this because you don't need to mention this. One plus equals two. It, there is no other option except for one here. So it has to be one. So if, or if I say one plus X equals three. There is, of course, this is this has to be two. There is no other way. It's the exact same way here as well. Allah is showing us the first step. Faltagum, stand. You have to stand. And the last step is that you 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 end the salah on prostration. So of course it is ruku. Then the other thing I want you to uh, to mention is uh, I, the one thing I want you to know is. The prostration, look, as soon as Fa'iza Sajadu, Salah is over. So Allah doesn't say Fa'iza Sajadu Maratain. Allah doesn't say when they prostrated twice. If we had if you had to prostrate twice, Allah would have said Eza Sajadu Maratain. But Allah doesn't say that. Why? Because there's only one prostration as Fa'iza Sajadu. That's it, right? Let's go back. I want to show this to you in the text. So, you see, Faiza Sajadu, this is really important. I want you to pay attention to this. Faiza Sajadu is referring very simple, only one prostration. So, it's easy to find a reference to this. If there were two prostrations, which prostration is Allah talking about? If, you were, if there were two prostrations in the Salah, was, is, there was a question. There would have been a question. Is Allah talking about the first prostration? Or is Allah talking about the second prostration? Please excuse my handwriting. It's not very good. I have said it several times. So Allah is... But Allah doesn't do that. So, so that tells you that there's only one prostration. There's no confusion as to which prostration Allah is talking about. So this is really important. The other way that, uh, that you should know is that if there were a couple, couple of prostrations, Allah would have said, Faiza sajadu marata, when they prostrated a couple of times or three times. And Allah doesn't say that. And that tells you exactly how many uh, prostrations there uh, exist in one unit or one racket out, out of Salah, and there's only one prostration. So my brothers, my sisters, how many prostrations are in the Salah? One prostration, as you can see in this picture, one prostration. And there's one standing, and there's one prostration. Ruku, or bowing, is a vehicle. I say it again, it's a vehicle that takes you from position number one, to position number three. There is no other way to get from position number one to position number three. You have to perform ruku. You have to bow and kneel to get from number one to number three. And if you were wondering about how you have to do the ruku, please watch my video about Alladina Yutuna Zakah Wahum Rakiun. It means those who give the zakah while bowing down. Allah clarifies it for us so that we know how we should perform the ruku. And I explained that in detail in that video. I will put the links in the description as well. So as you can see, Salah is very clear. Now obviously this is one unit, then uh, you multiply that, you basically do it twice and that is that becomes a two unit Salah or what Quran calls 
از مسنا مسنا means something that has two units مثنوی if you look at the, it's a kind of poet مثنا means two units so مثنا means two units but if you only perform one like in the situation of a war or if you are going somewhere and you are scared and you want to do just a quick salah then that would be this, this just this one would be a farada or uh, farada or a singly or a one unit salah so please if you have questions let me know if i have to make another video on this i will no problem because i want to make sure all the questions on this are answered and um, still we have to go to the verse 103 103 has even more important lessons for us so salah three things in salah remember qiyam standing ruku bowing and sujood prostration salah is over salah is over don't sit don't sit for tashahud don't sit for giving salam for moving your head to right and left these are all additions of satan don't follow the ways of Satan. Only follow the way of Allah and that is the Quran. Prostration. Only one prostration. Don't prostrate twice. And when you prostrate, don't come back sitting. As soon as prostration is over, you have to stand. Don't introduce sitting into the Salah. If there was any sitting in the Salah, Allah would have mentioned that. Allah would have said, Qa'idun or Jalisun. Means to those who sit. Have you seen anywhere in the Quran talking about the Salah, Allah saying anything about sitting? Introduce to me one verse that Allah says those who are sitting and saying the Salah. Qa'idun or Jalisun or anything like that. You cannot find any. There is none. Because it's not part of the Salah. But we're going to come back in the next verse. We're going to wrap it up. And inshallah, by that, uh, you're going to see all the details about the Salah from the Quran. Peace and blessings to all of you.